All right, cross cart fans. Today is one of my favorite days because it is Tilton Racing Pedal Day. Now, I spend extra money on racing pedals for one simple reason, safety. These give you control and control over something crazy makes it safer. Now, I've, I've had a Chinese go-kart, 250cc water-cooled, I think it was maybe 20 horsepower, 16 horsepower, something like that. But it would go about 50 miles an hour, which is very fast uh, for a Chinese go-kart with like three inches of suspension travel. And the throttle got stuck. I was doing like 45 and I was heading right for a road and I just, the brakes wouldn't hold and I could not get it stopped. And since then, I have uh, worked very hard to make things safe in that manner. So here's the pedals. They are made by Tilton. These are the 600 series. Um, the biggest things I like about this is uh, you can see the clutch over here. This is adjustable. Your throw on the clutch is adjustable. So that means if you use a hydraulic clutch, you are not going to overstroke your clutch. You can set the limits uh, by the master cylinder and by the stop to give you the exact feel that you want. If you think the clutch should release right when you start moving it, that's where you can set it. If you like uh, a tiny bit of play before the engine starts grabbing, you can put that in. Uh, another one is the throttle pedal. The throttle has a stop on this side and a stop for when it's all the way down. So you're not gonna snap any throttle cables. Um, it's got a strong spring on it. So your return is good, not only from your carburetor, but from your pedal. It just gives positive control. It has a balance bar. So there's a front and rear master cylinder that goes on here. It comes with pedals. It's a pretty simple kit, but it's well engineered. Let me throw it together and then we'll keep talking about it. So how much is a pedal set like this gonna set you back? 400 bucks. But that's 400 bucks of peace of mind. I was really hesitant to do it, and I kept looking at all the cheaper stuff, and I meant like cheaper stuff. I looked at fabricating my own, and it just, it, it didn't seem worth it to me. You can get racing pedal sets that, you know, are on a chassis like this, and you can set them up. Uh, I don't think there's as much adjustability um, for like a hundred bucks less. These things go, especially when we're building, go over a hundred miles an hour. So this is, this is a, a justified expense. Uh, the master cylinders I get are 75-625U and they are 5 8 bore, the smallest bore I could get because I wanted uh, the pedal to have a good feel. I didn't want it just to be full brakes as soon as I touched it. Now uh, I get these because they are very short. You can see, put it on there. It gives you plenty of room up front. All right, so there's all the master cylinders mounted up. Uh, they come with plugs in the output and in the reservoir side. They come with a reservoir that you can mount directly on top for a nice tidy install or make it a remote reservoir which is really slick. You can uh, route everything out of the way of your steering. They do sell a three pocket uh, master cylinder reservoir. So you just have the one reservoir with all of your hydraulics in there. Uh, the balance bar on this, you set it by hand by the distance they are apart. And then you can get a remote balance bar adjustment. So you can have an in-car on the fly remote adjustment, which these master cylinders are a hundred bucks each. Standard sizes are 70 to $80 each. 
um, if you buy a name brand one. Obviously, you can get cheaper ones on eBay or whatever, but you, you don't know if you're getting the correct mounting. So 100 bucks each on these, in the end, is only $50 more. And like I said, I don't like to cheap out on safety. Now mounting them, they've made it super easy. There's just four mounting locations. And I believe these are M8. So what I do is I just get a wavy washer and a serrated uh, nut. And then you can just drop it through to your mounting plate. And when you start to tighten that nut, it'll grab the bolt and then you can have a nice tight pedal, but be able to loosen it for adjustability as you've seen in the other videos. So it looks like we're to the point where we can put these on the buggy. This is actually a really fun day. This is pretty easy. All right, now you're gonna take your uh, front cross members, C34 and C35. I'm just gonna put these in place temporarily. Uh, you can slide them, but you do want them to fit pretty tightly because this squares up your front end, gives it a lot of support and it holds your pedals. So you can get those and you can kind of set them in there. Get yourself some flat bar. I use two inch flat bar for these. You can just lay them on top there. And now the where the pedals go is dictated by where your rack is and where your feet go, but these are adjustable. They have four to five inches of adjustment. So once you have that, you can put these right down on those bars and you can kind of get a feel for where they're gonna go. Now I like to put the steering rack right between the master cylinders for the front and rear brakes. Now we have our front end on a six or seven degree uh, rake, so that makes the pedals go backwards. What I do is I trim a little bit off of the master cylinder output to get these pedals standing up. Now that's gonna reduce throw in your throttle, but look how much throw this has. This has so much adjustment on it, it's gonna be hard to not get that same action out of your carburetor or your throttle cable. Um, don't put them back too far if you're using remote bias adjuster because that runs right under this throttle pedal. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take some measurements and figure out where exactly I want these pedals. All right, preferably you would wanna have your seat mounted first, depending on how tall you are or how long your legs are so that you can make sure you have enough room or you can just maximize the range you have. I already have one built, so I kinda of know the spacing that I want. Now keep in mind, the more adjustment you have, the thicker the metal you wanna use for your pedal mount. Um, I'm using just eighth inch flat bar but if you span this gap a lot, you may want to consider, you know, quarter inch or three sixteenths so that this stays nice and stiff. So the next step is tacking in these crossbars. Make sure they're nice and square. Uh, do not tack these in. Uh, we're going to work with those right after we get that tacked up. All right, now for your pedal mounts, you're going to make two slots in each side and you're going to space them at five and a half to six inches apart. Now that doesn't mean you're going to have five and a half to six inches of adjustment. The bolts are two inches apart. So you have to take that into account. If they're six inches apart, you're going to have roughly four inches of adjustment. All right, once you've got your holes, this is the tricky part. Now you're going to draw a straight line from the edges. You don't want this too wide because it'll make your pedals sloppy and you don't want it too narrow because your bolts won't slide. There are better machines than an angle grinder to do this. Uh, I just don't have it. All right, yeah, so just make 
basically a slot there. And that's why you use two inch, because you want a lot of metal there, even though you're cutting out the middle. All right, once you've got your slots, you can check your bolts, see if they're gonna slide. That one came out pretty good. This one is a little tight on the end. So I usually just hand file these. All right, once you've got your sliders made, go ahead and pop them in there. Get your pedals in, line up your slot, drop a bolt in, line up your slot. Now these are offset, the clutch kind of hangs off of one side, but it doesn't make it any weaker because it's a solid aluminum frame. Get that lined up, drop your bolt in, move it all the way forward Make sure you're not going to bind on anything. And you get your rear bolts and you drop those in. That'll help get everything square. Now, obviously, you can do this without the master cylinders on. It's a little bit easier. But I just put them on to check clearances. All right, so the bars are not going to be centered on your, your cross members. So get your actual pedals centered. Get it lined up. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to put a small tack on the front one and put it right in the middle so that the rear ends or the back side of these can move in or out as they need to. All right, now you just want to get a light tack right in the middle. Now you're going to slide the pedals all the way out and then you're going to tack the back side. And there you go. You have perfectly aligned adjustable pedals. And there you have it. There's your tacks in the front. Now you can go ahead and add some more tack welds if you want, but this is gonna hold because there's really no stress on this. Now you can take your wavy washer and your serrated nut, and you can put it on the underside. So there we go. With those just barely hand tight. This is pretty solid already. Now the point of the wavy washers is so you don't have to get a wrench underneath to loosen these up. You can do it all from the top with an Allen wrench. As long as you don't loosen them too much, just enough to slide it, the wavy washers will lock that nut back in so you have all your adjustment from the top. Not super hard today. Pretty easy, pretty fun. That does it for the racing pedals. We'll go through and we'll put the brake lines on. That'll be a different episode. I am really tempted to pull the racing seat out of one of the other carts, but the one for this shows up tomorrow. So as I'm sitting now, I've got a bunch of leg room. Now I only took half an inch off of all of those uh, brakes and everything. You could take more off. Just be careful how much you take off the first one I did, I took a little too much off. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize you could take too much off. So work your way slowly to where your pedals feel good. This is, uh, this is coming right along. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying everything. Thanks for all the comments. It's really awesome uh, that so many of you uh, appreciate what I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing this for you. Um, I've got a good career in the Air Force, so this isn't for money. This is just for the other builders out there. Uh, I didn't I didn't realize what I made was so uh, unique, special, cool, whatever you wanna call it. But when I started getting comments on how it's amazing and everybody wanted plans, well, I immediately thought of, of you and how I could get you one of these. And this is the best way I could come up with. So I, I really hope you're enjoying it and thank you very much. Ah! Uh.